This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the newest flagship phone of Apple and this year Apple did focus a lot on performance, camera improvements and the design. So let's just start with the design of the iPhone 15 Pro. Now you can see the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max do have a titanium side. Before it was stainless steel, what titanium does better than stainless steel is it's so much lighter. When I pick it first the iPhone 15 Pro up, it was so much lighter and it makes me smile because it feels really good this year. Like the iPhone 14 Pro was getting really heavy and this year the iPhone is a little bit thicker than the other years, They're like making it thicker every year. But if it was this year thicker and it did still have stainless steel, it will be heavier than ever before. It's just so much more fun to use this phone and when you pick it up, it feels new, it feels lighter and I think it's a good way that Apple is going back to lighter phones and not make them heavier. And stainless steel did also get a lot of fingerprints. I will be honest, on the titanium, you still get fingerprints, but it's not as dirty as like the stainless steel. Because on the stainless steel, it was all getting covered up and you will see it really good. But on the titanium, it's less noticeable. And what are the new colors on the Pro models? So we have natural titanium, the one that I have. Then we have black titanium, white titanium, and the blue titanium. So my reason why I did go for the natural titanium was because if you have the blue, the black, or the white titanium, it's with a coating on it. And Apple said is it takes 14 hours to apply the coating on these phones and always was taking the black version but this year I wanted to have a new color something different and I also have the Apple Watch Ultra so I was thinking it will match my phone better and yeah it does it's almost the same as the Apple Watch titanium and I was also thinking the coating on these phones when it just gets scratches or it falls it will just show the natural titanium color it will be more noticeable if it does have scratches and stuff but the natural titanium I think will hold up better long term and I also have seen some photos that the coded iPhones do get a little bit more fingerprints than the natural titanium also. So the next thing about the design is Apple did remove the ring of switch and it replaced it with the action button. We did first see the action button on the Apple Watch Ultra that was just an extra button but on the iPhone they just removed the ring of switch and put the action button on. It's just a small button as you can see it's really clickable. You need to hold it a little bit and then it will activate the action you want to do it. We have a couple of actions we can do like turn on the flashlight, voice memos, we can do shortcuts, we can of course silent the phone and unsilence it and a lot more. For me it's still on the silent button, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, it just reacts like in ring of switch. Connectivity and speed. First of all the iPhone did finally get USB-C. Now we have USB-C on the iPad, MacBook and iPhone of course. So we can just use one cable for all of these devices and also my camera, my gimbal, my drone, my GoPro, all with USB-C. So with all one cable I can charge almost everything. The only thing I just need to have an other cable for is of course my Apple watch but it also has USB-C so I can use an adapter so I just need two cables and yeah if I take my AirPods Max with me I still need lining so on the 15 series it's just USB 2 that's up to 400 megabits per second. On the iPhone 15 Pro, Apple did include USB 3. That's up to 10 gigabytes per second. So what you also can do with the USB-C port on an iPhone, you already did have that on the Android phones, but now you can use your iPhone to charge your AirPods or an Apple Watch or some other phones. I don't think it will be used a lot, but maybe if you're in need and your AirPods, you did forgot to charge and you don't have an adapter with you, but you have an USB-C to lightning cable or USB-C to USB-C cable, you can charge your AirPods or your Apple Watch. So the iPhone 15 Pro Max is also now starting at 256 gigabytes in the place of 128 gigabytes on the older models. Apple did put the second generation ultra wideband chip inside the iPhone and also in the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the Series 9 Apple Watch. But it's mostly used to like locate precise finding for air tags and also for like air dropping and stuff like the new animation really smooth. Apple says it just connects further away from something like an air tag. Let's talk about the camera. So let's just start with the ultra wide camera. Just a little improvement that does have wider sensors so it can capture more light so that means better photos in low light. Also does have the second generation optical image stabilization so that means if you're filming with the ultra wide camera it will be a little bit more stabilized. The main 48 megapixel camera that also get a bigger sensor, so also better performance in low light. Apple did say this iPhone did have seven lenses, of course, we don't have seven lenses, we only have three, but why Apple is saying that is because they just do like encrypting on the main camera. If you like tap it, we have the 24, the 28 and 35 millimeters. So just different focal lengths, it's nice that we have that and it's really welcomed. 
The next thing I'm a little bit disappointed about, that's about the telephoto lens. On the 15 Pro Max, only on that one, we now have five times optical zoom. Apple names is the Tetra Prism, and it uses a series of mirrors to reflect light and magnify it to keep the camera lens much smaller. I think they will fit this Tetra Prism inside the iPhone 16 Pro as well. And finally, we can record on an external drive. So that means if you're shooting an Apple ProRes, you can now just put SSD inside your iPhone and USB-C port, then you can record 4K at 60 frames per second externally. We cannot just record 4K 60 on the phone because it will fill up the storage too fast, but we can do it externally. On the 15 Pro Max, we still can get 4K at 30, I think 30 minutes or something, it's then the storage is full. Also, on this phone, we can finally record ProRes Lock. That means it's in flat profile, then we can just get the high dynamic range better, and it's also nicer to color grade footage. So, the next thing, later this year, Apple will enable spatial video on the Pro series. It uses is the main camera and the ultra wide camera if you're filming horizontally to capture a 3D video and then you can watch this back and relive the moment on the Apple Vision Pro that is also coming early next year. Still we don't know how we can see these videos on an iPhone or on an Apple TV, we don't know that yet. I just think it will be shown as a normal video. The next thing is the performance of this iPhone. This iPhone does have now the A17 Pro. This is only in the Pro series of course. It's the first time Apple names as a Pro and also the world's first 3 nanometer chip. This also does have a 6 core CPU to enhance the speeds of these iPhones. And what is the big thing about the A17 Pro is it does have 20 times faster graphic performance. And there will be coming triple A games to the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max because this chip is really good at ray tracing and it's really good for gaming. And also, this iPhone does now have Wi Fi 6E, it's just faster than Wi Fi 6. So the last thing is the screen. The screens on the 15 Pro series did not get a big upgrade, it's the same. The only thing that is really noticeable is the, the bezels are really thin. I think these are the thinnest bezels on the phone. For the rest, that's the only thing that changes about the displays. And also, yeah, the only difference is if you have 15, you will get 2000 nits, what was already on the 14 Pro series. Apple did not put 3000 nits on an iPhone Pro or something. I wish, but they did not do that. So this is my conclusion of having this phone for two days. It's a really nice upgrade, but I'll just say, really try to think if you really need this phone. For me, it was just, I really wanted the better camera a better zoom and also the lighter phone because the 14 Pro was really heavy and it was not that nice and I really love my new color it's the first time I do have a new color in years I was always getting the black version of the iPhones and the display with thinner bezels it feels just so much more modern and Apple like also the new action button I like it I will be honest it's really nice the only thing I have right now sometimes I press the volume up button then I'm thinking why it does not activate my action I don't have a case right now I only did apply a screen protector so thanks for watching this video I hope you did enjoy it I hope you did learn something about this phone and that you know all the new things on this phone in my next video I'm going a little bit more in depth about the camera system and about the performance so don't forget to like the video subscribe if you are new so we'll see you very soon in a new video.